Minister Kapil Sibal, Director Devan Kakar, distinguished family and friends, but most of all, the best class to ever come out of IIT Bombay, the class of 1970. Are we, are we all in agreement? <laughs> I've said it before, and it bears repeating. All of us were privileged to join IIT for a priceless education, which we got basically for free. And if you think of the context of the times when we were here, India had a lot, had a lot less money then uh, than it is today, and the claims on government funds were, were pretty significant. So to create these islands of excellence in a sea of chaos and poverty was really a very far-sighted and brave move uh, on the part of Pandit Nehru, the Education Ministry, and the faculties of IIT. And today, I think it is they who we should salute at a dedication of a building like this. Permit me a brief personal story, and let me tell you how I joined IIT. Yes, it was through the joint entrance exams, uh, that formidable and fair test. My father was a civil engineer in the Indian Railways. He would later become chairman, and he lived in Delhi. Uh, and I was debating as to whether I would join IIT Madras or IIT Bombay. And my mother brought me here from Delhi and we walked through the campus. And she held my hand and said very quietly, you know, I think you're going to fit in very well over here. <laughs> and so I did. And 45 years later, my mother is back on campus. <laughs> All of us, the class of 1970, and all alumni owe a lot to our parents, to our martyrs, and our armor martyrs. And it just wasn't the facilities in the campus that were beautiful and new as it was then. It wasn't just the faculty who are incredibly smart, dedicated, and accessible, and driving. Kamath still gives me nightmares <laughs> over his circuit tests. But it was actually our fellow students, our class, the striving cream of the crop who came through this remarkable exam system. They all came from different parts of the country, spoke different languages, and were, you know, as diverse as you can imagine. We had Parsis, Maharashtrans, Christians, Sikhs, Gujaratis, Tamils, and Nepalese. And that was just my wing. <laughs> And dealing with that cultural diversity was a great thing and a great learning for the global village ahead that we live in today. And the funny thing now is that when I see all the same guys 40 years later, they're just as talented, they're just as diverse, and they're probably a little more crazy. <laughs> but it was IIT Bombay that brought us together and profoundly shaped us to what we are today. So it's my hope that this building will provide a forum for those crazy, talented, and diverse IITians of the future to meet, to argue, to create new products, to create an innovations that will change the world. And for me, and for my wife Tara, and for my classmates, this is just a small way to salute you and to say thank you very much. Victor, Devang, Anilji, distinguished members of the Menezes family, distinguished alumni of the 1970 class, and students, faculty members, my friends in the media, ladies, for research to the problems that confront 21st century India. In a sense, uh, 21st century globally, 
because the nature, nature of collaborations, the nature of research, the nature of technology too has changed. And at the end of the first decade of the 21st century, we stand at the crossroads. We are witnessing a past that has been destroyed and a future that is entirely uncertain. Why do I say a past that has been destroyed? Because the solutions of the past are irrelevant to deal with the problems of the future. And why is the future uncertain? Because we are not sure how we're going to deal with those problems. We're not sure how we're going to deal with 8.9 or 9.2 billion people in 2050 with the kind of resources we have, natural resources. We do not know how we're going to feed those people in 2050. We're not sure as to how we're going to solve the energy problems of tomorrow. And the kind of requirements uh, in energy that we need to give a reasonable way of life to the ordinary inhabitant of planet Earth. We do not know what our transportation systems are going to be like. Can we continue to afford to use fossil fuels in the manner that we do? We do not know what kind of viruses, what kind of pathogens are going to attack the human species in the con with the respect that they deserve. They are our beacons, our torchbearers for the solutions of tomorrow. And we need to recognize that. Agriculture. Agricultural research is abysmally poor in our country as of today. We need to invest much more in agricultural research. We can't afford, for example, to use the kind of, in the volume of water that is used for growing rice today. We have to move. Into, in, into genetic engineering. We have no choice. Either through market technology or genetic engineering, we need to go to. We need to find solutions where we can have seeds in agriculture which are resistant to both biotic and abiotic stresses. Use less water to grow rice. Because water is going to be a very scarce commodity. But these solutions are required for tomorrow. I mean, they, they, they are needed today. And if we work and we start investing now, we will have solutions 10 years from now, 12 years from now, when the problem will be upon us. But we need to think into the future to deal with the challenges of the future. And that's what we need to do, and that's what innovation really means. Recognize the areas of knowledge which are crucial for the solutions of tomorrow. Allow the community to innovate by giving them the kind of freedom that they need. And ensure that you have the technology prescription that can deliver those solutions. Like the fisherman now, you know, if he's in the Bay of Bengal and he's fishing, he knows uh, where the catch of the fish is going to be during the morning. Because he gets that information on his cell phone. The agriculturalist today knows as to when he should sell his harvested crop because he gets information on his mobile phone. And so we need those technology solutions in place. We need an interconnected India where the fiber optics are at the doorstep of every villager's home. That's what we need. And we need an interconnected India with the mines the great minds of the IIT system are connected with each other through an environment that is hospitable. We need freedom in the classroom, not a dialogue between the teacher and the student, but a dialogue between students to allow the teacher to learn. That's what we need. We need the way, change the way people teach. And we need to change the way children learn. So we need a whole new a paradigm shift in the way we think and the way we do things. 
And I'm sure that in this hall there are many, many, many minds who are peeping into the future and who will be the leaders of tomorrow. Ours, our life for people of my age uh, is history. You are the ones who are going to make history. Thank you and congratulations. This is a very wise decision to make me unwrap because, you know, then people know what I've gotten. Exactly. <laughs> Transparency is the key. I love you. Oh, this is lovely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a caricature. This caricature has been drawn by one of our faculty members, yeah. Professor Arun Inamdar, who is uh, <laughs> I'd like to also invite uh, Victor on stage and I have another <laughs> Thank you very much.